Hey everyone, this is Andrew, and in this video I'm going to show you how to wire up your first Eurorack patch. So if you've never wired up Eurorack patch, or you're curious as to what the process is like, because you want to get into this, uh, it can be a little overwhelming at first. So I'm going to take you through the whole process, from having absolutely nothing plugged in, to having uh, some kind of sound. So, first of all, uh, over here, just out of reach, I have this Pittsburgh lineouts. And that's going to allow me to get a signal from my Eurorack out into my uh, DAW, or my audio interface. And that's kind of, you need something like that. It doesn't have to be that, but you need something to go from the output of your Eurorack and convert to a line level signal if you want to record anything. If you don't want to record anything, there's other methods that maybe you could take it to headphone level or, or whatever. But that's what I'm using. Now the other base piece I have is that I need some kind of input module. So in this case, I have this Mutable Instruments Yarns module, which allows me to just get a MIDI input, and it'll split the signal out into a Eurorack compatible uh, signal. If you have a Moog Mother 32, it has a MIDI input, so then you can use the gate and KB settings to trigger an oscillator or trigger whatever. So those are the different methods. Now in this case, what happens when I hit a key on my keyboard, you're going to see here that it lights up. That's indicating that there's information on those uh, inputs. So what I can do is I can get a patch cable and I can go from the CV, which is going to be the volt per octave information, and I can go up into this Pico VCO by Ericasense. And then if I want to get any sound out of this, well I have to go from the output of the oscillator into my output. Now I'm going to go into a VCA, I'll talk about what a VCA is in a sec, and then I need to go from my output of my VCA into my life form outs. So immediately, there's some sound. And so what's happening here is that the volt per octave information is getting sent to the VCO, and then essentially right now it's just going straight from the VCO into the output. Now the note doesn't stop when I let go. Right now I'm not holding the keys. Every time I hit a key, retaining the last volt information that's being sent to the module. Because the oscillator just sees an input voltage and it oscillates at a frequency at a, at a frequency related to the volt per octave information that's being sent. It has nothing telling it how to start and stop. It's just constantly oscillating. Now the VCA, it's just functioning as a mixer right now. I'm putting a signal in, I can put a bunch of other signals in, mix them together with the volume level knobs, and I'll put that into my uh, Pittsburgh line outs module. So that's useful. I have a bass sound. I can tweak the sounds up here. I'm going to leave that in that sound. Hopefully it's not too irritating. I'll turn it down a little bit. And now I want to actually be able to control that sound. I don't just want to have it just ring continuously. So what I can do is that I can use the gate trigger from my, mar my yarns module. And I can put that into uh, maths, which can generate an envelope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the signal on this wire go into the trigger. Which every time it gets information, it's going to trigger maths to to create something. So in this case, I need to, I'm going to get the unity output, and I'm going to put that onto the CV information for that channel. So as you can see, every time I hit a note here, I'm getting a little blip. And what's happening is that math is generating an envelope, a, a volume envelope in this case, to control uh, the volume knob by itself. So. I turn this back up. Actually, I'll turn it down and I'll turn this knob up. I'm getting little blips. Now, if I turn up the decay, I turn up the rise. So 
what's happening here is that every time I hit a note, it's generating a sharp gate, which then triggers the maths module to create an envelope shape, you know, based on rise and fall times, and that controls the volume knob on this VCA. So now we have a kind of a normal uh, synth sound to some degree. And that's all well and good. Now, the next step is that you might want to filter that sound. So instead of going from the output of my VCO into the quad VCA, I'm going to go into the input of this filter here. I'm going to go into the output from the filter back into this VCA. Now I can change the cutoff frequency. In this case, it's band pass. Flip the switch, go to low pass. And that's pretty cool. But uh, most synths, what they can do is they can generate, instead of just an um, envelope for the VCA, they can generate an envelope for the filter. So instead of getting this output and controlling the VCA volume, I can send it to this multiple. And so what's that going to... And so what that will allow me to do, if I use this short cable instead, is that's going to split the signal into three instead of just one. So now if I put this back in here, I'm going to get my normal VCA controlled by the maths. And then I can also, if I get a good wire, I can go from the output of this and put that into the CV in of the filter. Now you can hear that the signal is not just having an envelope on the, the volume, it's having an envelope on the filter, too. You can mess with these settings a little bit, change the fall and rise. A little too short. And that's pretty cool. So what I can do is I can use an LFO to modulate something. So I have a speed triggered here. Maybe I'll go a little slower. Just tap something in there. And I can use that to control... How about we use that to control the filter instead? So I have the filter CV here. I rip that out. I'm going to put it... Put the LFO in its place. I'm going to put the fall time for longer so we get a longer uh, sound. too long. I'll do a very long attack. So now we have a relatively normal synthesizer at this point. And if we want to get a little crazy, what we can do is instead of going directly into this VCA here, I'm going to put that out, and I can go into something like clouds, which I have all the way over here. I'm going to put it in the right input. I can go from the right output back into my VCA. pitch. And then now I have the clouds over here generating some kind of cool reverby slash delay type sounds. 
I can increase the fall time a bit to get more ring out and just mess with these knobs a little more. crazy thing I could do is I could get the output of another LFO and I can put that into this CV input on the VCO. And it's a little too crazy for me so I think what we should do instead, I'll kill that sound for now, is I'm gonna get the LFO and I'm gonna put that into the input here and then what I can do now is that the LFO is gonna be making a volume it's gonna be controlled by this this knob here so what I can do is I can get the output of that again using the VCA to my advantage go into that wavetable there realize something all of these cascade into each other so what I have to do is kind of kind of flip this around a little bit since I don't have another VCA so I'm gonna get output 2 rip it out I'm gonna get this I'm gonna apply it to input 4 I'm gonna get this sound and put it into input 4 now I have that same original sound that I was going for and I should be able to get this input put it into input one, I'll put that here, and put that into the wavetable. And now I have a more subtle oscillator uh, controlling the VCO. I can generate another LFO here. I could output from this. Turn that on, and I can actually control, uh, what am I even using input one? I can put a, that CV there. And so now I have a VCO being controlled by essentially an envelope, and then I have three different oscillators controlling different things, uh, and it's going through clouds and everything. So very quickly I've gone from using my Eurorack to generate just a very simple synth sound to generating uh, a wacky, infinitely expandable, you know, crazy sound machine. Um, this is pretty basic patch, and you know, just think of how many cables I have left. This is, I have like another five or six after that where I could, you know, get the sound, and I could route it through this Rainmaker crazy delay thing, and I could get this variegate, and I can get some drums going, and the various kind of drums plugins I have going. I could use rings, which generates kind of strings and other resonant instruments. I can get another filter going, and, and this is really just the beginning. So that's kind of the process to getting your first basic Euroratch patch going, and then kind of how you can expand it to create something that sounds very basic to something that sounds absolutely, you know, kind of, kind of crazy. All right, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe for more. I upload videos every single Friday. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. I try to be pretty good at answering questions. And yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.